This car is the most efficient car I've ever driven. Now I know there's a lot of animosity about electric cars and people seem to either adore them or hate them with an absolute passion. But trust me, I really think potentially many of us should be driving a car like this to and from work to drop and pick up the kids. It makes a lot of sense. This is the Volkswagen E-Up, or as we're gonna sometimes call it, the Up. My name is David RC. This is the Dundee YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe. And in this review, we'll be talking about why this could be the ultimate car for the daily commuter. So hear me out here. The E Up explanation mark. It's cheap. Well, relatively cheap. It's cheerful, and it's actually quite a good car. So let's begin with the cheap. Prices start at about twenty-seven eight five zero. Now I know that's not exactly cheap. But per month that works out I think about 309 euro. But when you compare it to a lot of EVs nowadays that are almost, I'm not gonna say entry level, but not exactly luxury cars, and they can cost in around 50K. Now to be fair to that 50,000 euro EV, it generally comes with quite a long range, somewhere in the middle of the 400 kilometer mark, and it usually has a battery over 50 kilowatt hours. So what do you get here in the E up explanation mark? Well. You get a 32 kilowatt hour battery, which seems small, but bear with us. Then the claimed WLTP range of this is 253 kilometers. And this is the first car I've ever driven in my whole life that far exceeds that. And we'll talk about that in a short moment. Then in terms of power, you get a 63 kilowatt electric motor. I think it is, it gives you a whopping 83 brake horsepower. So it's definitely not mad power, but the car is really light. It's very nimble and actually it's just about right and it's perfectly capable on the motorway. But this is designed for around town, so let's go for a drive now around the city and see how we find it. So to drive, well, the first thing I want to point out is the key. Such an interesting concept, you have to turn it to turn it on, but it doesn't actually crank an engine, so it's just a weird feeling. But we'll get used to it. Now on the road, it's a lot bigger than you expect in here, it's quite spacious. You would think with 83 horsepower, that's not gonna be very fast, but when you put your foot down, it's pretty quick. If you put it in B mode down here, the regenerative braking is sensational. We're actually gonna take a right-hand corner, and I'm not using any brakes now, and I'll come the whole way to a halt if I needed to. On top of that, the turning circle is fabulous. You can get in and around tight little parking spots. It's so easy to use. This little reversing camera actually helps a little bit, especially with the parking sensors. It makes life so much easier. If you do take it out on the open road, there's lane assist, there's cruise control. It really does tick a whole lot of boxes. Obviously this car is designed to be driven around an urban environment in a city at slow speeds. It's extremely quiet. And at that, the suspension's well dampened. It doesn't feel very stiff. I'm about to hit a pothole here and you'll see it just kind of absorbs it nicely. And I can imagine if you had two or three people in the car, it would be even more smooth as the suspension has got a little bit more weight on it. And just as a whole, it's a lovely place to sit and drive around town. I suppose if I could nitpick, I would kind of prefer to have the option to get an Apple CarPlay system here, just because if you are driving around town, you might need to use the likes of Waze to help you with traffic, which can sometimes cause a little bit of issues. But as a whole, to drive here around the city, it's an absolute breeze and it's great for parking. The interior in here, very similar to nearly any Volkswagen that you've ever been into, particularly if you were to wind it back a few years. The steering wheel, it's very similar to what we've seen in maybe some Polos. And then the whole infotainment system thing, it's brilliant actually. It's not too complicated, which is great if you're not really into tech. So your climate control is controlled up here. It's very simple to use. Your radio is so normal and easy to use. It's, it's almost like going back 10 years in time in the right way. It connects up wirelessly to Bluetooth uh, so you can have phone calls while you're driving in a safe way without touching your phone. And then there's also a way to put up your phone. Now this system up here is a little bit gimmicky but it does work. So you put up your phone there and then there's an app that you can use. It almost works like an Apple CarPlay type thing. Uh, and then one thing I will actually talk about is when you put it in reverse, there's the world's smallest reversing camera, but it is kind of cool to have it. And there is of course parking sensors. Then up here, the dials are very conventional. For example, where your petrol would normally be, you now have how much battery you've left in the tank. 
and it's just a very familiar place to be. There's a good old fashioned handbrake, which we don't see too often. Your lights are down here to the right. The seat's quite adjustable and it feels a little bit more spacious in here than it looks from the outside. We'll take a look in at the rear though, because that's a little bit different. So things in here, they're not exactly huge, but do you know what? They're a little bit better than you expect. So when you sit in, I actually have enough headroom and an okay amount of knee room. I wouldn't want to go on a six hour drive, but it's okay. There's a little cup holder here. My feet fit right under the seat in front and there's actually ice fix points on both sides. So if you have young kids or maybe grandkids or whatever it might be, you can put the baby seats in here, which is also really, really handy. And that's basically it. We'll take a quick look at the boot though too, because I'm sitting here thinking that, that must be tiny. To open up the boot, you just press in that button and up she comes and you're greeted with 251 liters, which isn't obviously massive, but it's enough for a bit of charging cables, some shopping, maybe some school bags. And actually we had a lot of camera bags in here earlier. And it was absolutely perfect. Now it is quite raw. There's no kind of carpets covering the rear wheel arches. Um, and also there's no spare wheel in here, just a puncture repair kit, which might be something that's not ideal. But then again, this will mostly be around the city. And then the last thing to note is that the seats do fall down, uh, which obviously increases that boot size massively. But they've done a great job of really using every inch of this car right the way up into each corner to maximize all the space. Now a big question with EVs is how fast can they charge? Can I get a quick charge? How long does it take? Now the good thing is because it's a small battery, it doesn't take that long to charge. Now that said, the original E-Up didn't have the capability for fast charging, whereas they've added it now. So if you go to a CCS or a DC charger, you can get the quick charge. But in my opinion, you don't need it. To begin with, this is the type of car that you really wanna just charge up at home and then go about your daily commute. It's obviously more efficient, particularly if you use the night rate, but also it just kind of doesn't really need to be using the public infrastructure on the motorways, but it's good to know that you can. And actually these, ESP chargers are more than perfect. I've been using it all week, park it, leave it for an hour or two, come back and it's fully charged. Now I know you might not have the time for that, uh, but that is kind of one of the things you have to bear in mind with all EVs. At the very beginning of this review, I mentioned that this is quite possibly the most efficient car I've ever driven. Now this is for a few reasons. To begin with, it's not an out and out electric car, which means that Volkswagen didn't have to go and design an entire new platform, which takes a lot of resources and obviously isn't ideal for the environment, building new molds, infrastructure, factories. They've just put an electric motor in an already existing petrol car. Number one, that's very efficient. Number two, is that on top of that, the battery is quite small, which means again, smaller carbon footprint from that side of things. And then the third one is just how efficient it is to drive. I've never driven an electric car that when it comes to consumption is under or is single digit kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yesterday, I drove this to me and back, motorway mileage, and I was 9.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That is unheard of. And I've actually seen it on an in-town spin being around five or six kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This is another level of efficiency. And that brings me into the battery. Now granted, it's been a glorious week whilst I've had this car. The sun has been shining. It's about maybe 15, 16 degrees Celsius. But the range on this, the real world range I've been experiencing is genuinely in the 310, 315 kilometer range, which is staggeringly good. And I've been on the motorway, I've been around town. That's a mixed amount of driving. So for that reason, I reward this, or I award this, the most efficient and economical car I've ever driven. And I think it's excellent for that. It's full of character, it's nice and small, it's a bit perky, and I've really enjoyed it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to search for Volkswagen Ups or E-Ups for sale, or any Volkswagen for that matter, hit the link up there. We've got over 1,000 trusted dealerships nationwide. That's all from me. We'll see you in the next one.